Consumer behaviour refers to how people make decisions about which products to buy and all activities relating to this, such as advertising. A broad range of psychological concepts and strategies are used to help advertisers compete for product recognition, as well as influencing public opinion of a brand and encouraging consumers to buy their products. The main strategies from the cognitive approach that are used by advertisers are priming and cognitive biases. Priming is the idea that an earlier stimulus causes a temporary increase in the accessibility of thoughts and ideas, so when a later stimulus relates to this information, it is more readily available and therefore influences the response. This is used by advertisers to increase the chances of consumers recalling a certain brand. Advertisers use a range of stimuli in their adverts to develop schema associated with the brand, such as images, colours and sounds. Their adverts then aim to prime these stimuli, causing a temporary increase in the accessibility of information related to that brand. This therefore increases the likelihood of a consumer being triggered to recall the brand in response to a later stimulus. For example, McDonald's use iconic colours, shapes and sounds and build a brand image of being family friendly, fun and inclusive. They use advertising to temporarily increase the accessibility of this information for consumers, so when parents are thinking of buying their children a fun weekend treat, they're more likely to recall the McDonald's brand, as it is associated with these qualities and temporarily more accessible to them due to priming. Yi argued that a key stimulus that is primed through advertising is the context of the advert. This means that it is not only the colours, sounds and images, but the actual physical setting of the advert that also has a priming effect. The context and all things associated with it are primed, making recall of the brand more likely when a consumer is then in a similar or associated context themselves. For example, a car brand may use a winding mountain road to temporarily increase the accessibility of the brand in a person's schema when thinking of an adventurous driving experience. Another brand may use a family outing as the main context of an advert to increase the accessibility of the brand in a person's schema when thinking of family-friendly cars. There is evidence to support priming through different senses. For example, Adrian North researched the effects of background music on the way participants described the wine they were tasting. He found that the description of the wine matched the type of music they were listening to. This shows priming through hearing. The music temporarily increases the accessibility of thoughts and ideas, such as adjectives, to describe the music. So when asked to describe the wine, these same adjectives are the most accessible and therefore used. For priming to be effective, the stimuli do not need to be obvious to the consumer. They could even be hidden within the advert and be perceived subconsciously by the viewer. This is called subliminal messaging. Despite not being actively noticeable by the consumer, they can still have the effect of priming. For example, Laura Smarandescu conducted a study in which participants were exposed to subliminal messages about the brand Powerade. She found that these messages influenced their choice of drink, as information about the brand was temporarily more accessible to them due to priming. However, she found that the impact of subliminal messaging is weak, as the effects only lasted for approximately 15 minutes. It is also important to note that subliminal messages is considered unethical. Furthermore, priming studies in general are difficult to replicate and are therefore considered less scientific when assessing the quality of evidence to support the theory. Another cognitive technique that advertisers use is brainwashing. This is when advertisers use stimuli in a way that encourages consumers to accept information without critical thought. It is commonly achieved through rapid repetition of stimuli and appeals to emotions. Finally, advertisers use various types of cognitive bias to influence consumers. They also have to contend with the challenges of cognitive biases. Confirmation bias is an interesting concept in explaining consumer behaviour, as customers that have strong brand loyalty are more likely to pay attention to information that confirms their positive view of a brand. This helps advertisers to build brand loyalty for their products, but also makes it incredibly difficult to change someone's mind about a brand once they've formed a negative view. Another common cognitive bias that is used in advertising is authority bias. This is when we are more likely to accept and recall information from someone that we perceive to have an amount of authority. For example, when advertisers use dentists to promote toothpaste.